Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and there's a lot to cover today. But before I do, I wanted to show you this. This is interesting. One of the first people out of the first hundred people that subscribed to my channel was a guy named Mike Jansen. He was the announcer for the Indianapolis Colts. Not too long ago, he was fired, uh, fired late off. I don't know what you call it, but I think he was fired from the Indian without, and the way I understand it from the article I just looked at is that, is that it was really not for any good reason uh, from his perspective. And so um, what, what this is about is he is, he was there when Peyton Manning won the Super Bowl in 2006 and he got a Super Bowl ring. Well, he, he turns out he is auctioning off his ring. And by the way, Mike Jansen did not tell me to talk about this. Mike Jansen um, does not even know I'm talking about this. But the reason I'm doing it is because this guy supported me from the very beginning. He, he created my intro and my outro that you see in every one of my videos out of the kindness of his heart. And this guy is a, is a stand-up guy. And so what I'm going to do is I, he's auctioning his ring. And, um, and I, here's actually a picture of it. This is, the, this is the actual Super Bowl ring that he's auctioning. The current bid's $4,200. I'm not making any money off of this. He doesn't even know. He didn't ask me to do it. And I'm anyway. I'm just. I'm putting the link to this auction in the top of the description of this video. If you want to go bid on this ring, um, this guy has been such a good guy to me from the very beginning and supportive, and um, he deserves to uh, have this mentioned. And so, uh, go check him out. Now, I want to show you something that I've never shown on this channel before. I, you've seen me talk about how I, I use a Ledger Nano X and the Ledger Stacks is coming out. The link to this is also in the top of the description. Those are going to be shipping in May. Something I bought yesterday, though, you've never seen. Watch this. This is called the Bill Photo. You know how we all write down our 24 words seed when, when we have a Ledger Nano S or a Trezor, Trezor or, or those things? Watch this. Do you own a hardware wallet like a Ledger, Trezor, or KeepKey? If so, you probably recorded your recovery seat on a piece of paper like this as a backup. But what would happen if your backup was hit by a natural disaster like a fire or flood? Would your coins be safe? That's why we created the Bill Funnel. To show you its strength, take a look at how it compares to the paper backup once we put each of them through a trial by fire and water. All right, so I ordered my Bill Foddle yesterday, and um, I'm going to put a link in the top of the description for the Bill Foddle if you want to get one. Uh, I got one, but I think I'm going to get another couple because I have got uh, several of these um, Ledger Nano S's. I think you can store your 24 words. Each Bill Foddle holds 24 words is my understanding. So that's what's going on there. Now, this is Michael Arrington's feed um, for on Twitter. He's got a picture of him, and I think that's his girlfriend, the, one, the woman that created Proppy. And then um, as you scroll down, he's got a picture of him and Brad Garlinghouse. And so they're apparently at this at a conference. Then he's got, apparently at the same conference, a picture of Charles Hoskinson with him, which I find interesting because Charles Hoskinson said he would never be at a conference ever again with anybody from Ripple or having to do with XRP. So I'm wondering if, if Charles Hoskinson saw Brad Garlinghouse there and ran the other way. I don't know, or ran out of the room because he's not supposed to be in the room with anybody from Ripple. <laughs> also, in, but this is interesting, in Michael Arrington's feed, um, to reach 100 million users worldwide, it took the telephone 75 years, mobile phone 16 years, World Wide Web 7 years, iTunes 6.5 years, Twitter 5 years, Facebook 4.5 years, WhatsApp 3.5 years, Instagram 2.5 years, A Apple App Store 2 years, Chat GPT 2 months. That's 
how fast this chat G, this AI thing with chat GPT is catching on. And we've, you, we've all been in there typing in what's, what do you think the value of XRP should be and all that stuff. Well, but that's how fast this AI stuff is catching on. It's going to be as big as crypto, if not bigger. And I wanted to show, I, I mentioned it yesterday, but link to who is one of my sponsors. If you, if you're looking at their private equity here, they have a filter by vertical. You can actually choose artificial intelligence and it pops up the companies that they currently have on the platform that are art that are involved in artificial intelligence. This is going to be one of the biggest industries that there is. The link to that will be in the top of the description. Let's check in with the official cool guy, the digital asset investor channel. What's up fam. Happy Friday. A little econ 101 headlines, unemployment rate, the lowest since the 1960s. Well, let me tell you something. When somebody gives up looking for work, they're called the discouraged worker and they're not calculated in that formula. So it's a lie. It's manipulated. There's help wanted signs anywhere. Nobody's working. That's right. The, we live in the age of lies. Don't forget that, folks. If they want you to think that inflation is under control, they just take out uh, of, the, of the calculation things that would involve, be in, involved in inflation. They just take that out of the calculation. If, they, if, if eggs are too inflated, they'll just take the eggs out of the calculation. No big deal, right? Then they'll say inflation's not high. I mean, these people are sick and we live in the age of lies. Now, this popped up yesterday afternoon. I was actually on the treadmill when I saw this. This is fair with Stefan Thomas, who was one of the creators of the Interledger protocol, my understanding. This is farewell, but not goodbye. Today, COIL is sunsetting. I would like to thank the team that made COIL what it is, helped create the Interledger Foundation and ecosystem around it. Da, da, da. And he has a whole thread on this. Well, words mean things. If you've been watching this channel for any period of time, you know that. He said he did not say uh, COIL is going bankrupt. He did not say that we are shutting COIL, our business COIL down. He said COIL is sunsetting. So I looked up sunsetting because words mean things. And I like this part. Sunsetting. Something may be a part of the original plan. And that is what the first thought I had when I saw this. Now, this is interesting right here. This was um, this is this Joshua Barbin, who's apparently CFP, professional to the XRP community. He's a CFP, CPWA, I don't know what that is, and a CIMA. I think those are all financial uh, designations. But anyway, he did a, uh, he calls it Blue Skies and Open Seas, and he did a, um, I think he calls it an AFP conditional probability model on the Ripple lawsuit. In other words, settlement, judgment, you know, and he did all kinds of scenarios. But I want to take you down to the most interesting part. I want, to, I want you to see this chart, but before I do, I want, to, I want to read this part. Overall, my expected odds that XRP holders get a good or acceptable outcome is roughly 90%. Now that's cool. Now look at this. And I don't understand exactly how all this works, but I do understand the first two. He, or, or I think I do, he is saying that it's a 70% probability that the case settles and a 30% probability that it goes to trial. I think included in that would be a, a, ju a summary judgment. Okay. Um, case settles 70%. 80%, if it does, I'm assuming this means if it does settle, there's an 80% chance um, that future U.S. sales to qualified purchasers and a 20% no future U.S. sales and then Ripple relocates. I think I'm reading that right. The 30%, let's say it goes to trial. He's saying that there would then be a 33% chance Ripple wins on sum summary judgment and a 66% that SEC wins on summary judgment. And if the SEC wins on summary judgment, there would be an 80% chance that secondary market sells not a security. I think that that's pretty given. I, personally, that's what I believe. 20% is deemed an unregistered security outright. And then he says, if secondary market sales are not a security, then there's a 70% chance that Ripple relocates and still uses XRP. 30% chance that they abandon XRPL, dissolves new, and create a new token, I guess. 
If the asset is deemed an unregistered security outright buyback scenario where SEC would be buying back, I guess. That's what they did in, was it Telegram, I think? 70% free fall UST FTT. Not sure what they're referring to there. But um, what's the other one? If Ripple wins in summary judgment, if it goes to trial and Ripple wins in summary judgment, there's a 100% chance that XRP never a security. That's what I'm talking about. I, I agree that there's a 90% chance that this ends favorably for XRP today and going forward in that it's not a security. I, I believe that that, I believe at a minimum, that's what's going to happen. I do believe that they're going to say that certain sales in the past were securities. Um, but that's assuming that there's no settlement. But I'm still in this 70%. Camp, until I see unredacted Hinman documents, I will stay in this 70% chance right here, that camp right there. Uh, let's see what else we got. Now, look, I'm no Bitcoin fan, but this is a little much. Well, if Bitcoin will become the uh, ultimate type of a form of the currency been adopted by human society, I can I can tell you exactly what's going to happen as the worst scenario or yeah. the must scenario. We're all going to die. This is not a joke. We're all going to die if Ripple succeeds. Um, let's see. I think I'm going to hold off on the rest of this video. I got so much more for the next video, and I think I'm going to hold off. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that we're all going to die if Bitcoin succeeds. Now, I don't really believe that, but I thought it was kind of a crazy video. You know what? <clears throat> While we're on that, I think I need to, I do need to cover one thing, and that is this. Today, um, we're, they're talking about there's a Chinese spy balloon caught over the U.S. nuclear facilities. And I said almost as if our government wants you to see it. The great thing about propaganda is that now we've watched it in crypto for so long, we know which agencies promote it, so or which news outlets. So you know this is lies if they pick up on it. <clears throat> CNBC. Um, so look, until we start seeing some of these U.S., some of our regulators, politicians, etc., going to prison for their corruption. I don't believe anything that comes out of this country anymore. I, you, I don't believe a freaking word, folks. Until you start seeing people held accountable, there are people that need to go to prison. And until you see it, it's like we're living in a police state or something. Thanks for listening.